by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries. Coming up next on Changing Your World. Jesus didn't come to condemn you because you did that or you did that, or Jesus didn't come to condemn you because your behavior was bad. He didn't come to forgive you because you didn't speak the right words. He didn't come to condemn you because you missed a week of praying. He didn't come to condemn or judge you for that. Text to give with Secure Give is a fast, easy way to give from anywhere, anytime. It's just two quick steps. First, text the keyword CDMBC followed by the amount you like to give to 74483. Second, when asked to confirm, just text Y and your transaction is complete. That's all there is to it. Text to give, the fastest, easiest way to give on the go. This is your world, so let's vow to make it a better place. Let every heart that needs to know, your love is here to stay. Ooh, it's time we live a new life. Ooh, Let us love shine bright in you. We're saved by His grace, so we embrace your love today. We are changed. I want to start off a little different here today, and um, I'm, I'm leading in these next three verses of scriptures to a question that I think I need to ask, you need to hear, and we need to answer. John 3 and 17 says, For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but he sent his Son that the world through him might be saved. So you can tell by the Scripture, he's not talking about the earth, he's talking about people, okay? He said God didn't send his Son into the world. The world, would, it, it is a system of operation. Uh, the world, uh, it's, it's the way people think. The world chooses to, to live in opposition to the Word. Uh, the world, they choose to live in, to think in opposition to the Word. In other words, what the world does is they, the world would be those who have yet to be transformed by the Word of God. Remember Romans chapter 12, he says, don't be conformed to the world's way of operation the world's way of doing things, the world's way of thinking. See, people that are worldly are people that live in the world, but they go against the Word. People who have been born again have been born again out of the world because now they choose to be transformed by the Word. And so you, you see the difference when somebody says, when somebody uh, talks about the world, they're talking about people who are outside of Christ, who've not accepted Jesus as their Lord and personal Savior, those who don't believe the Word, and their operation is not based in the Word. Their norms and values uh, go against God's Word, and what's right and wrong uh, in the world is based on if a whole bunch of people say this is right, then it's, it's right. If a whole bunch of people say this is wrong, then this is wrong. That's, that's the way of the world. That's the system of operation. Now, sometimes church people get, get that kind of mixed up a little bit, and, and they get a little bit too deep, and they call everything worldly. And so you don't know how to enjoy life. God, God's objective is for you to enjoy life. But some of you have gotten so re religious and so deep, you don't even know how to enjoy life. Everything's worldly. You can't dance. That's worldly. You can't go to the movies. Remember those days? That's worldly. You know, you can't wear, well, well it used to be you can't wear, what was it, long, you couldn't wear pants. That's worldly. We've come out of a lot of that stuff, but some of it still exists. So let me give you the definition of what's worldly, okay? So you can have that. In um, 1 John chapter 2, 16 in the NLT, let's read it there. 1 John chapter 2, 16 in the NLT, and we'll come back to the description in a moment, but I, I'm going to take opportunity to really explore this. 
In 1 John 2, 16, he says, for the world offers only a craving for physical pleasure, a craving for everything we see, and pride in our achievements and possessions. These are not from the Father, but they are from this world. All right, now go to the King James. So basically, he's talking about, so what is worldly? He says, for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but it's of the world. So if it involves the lust of the flesh, it's worldly. If it involves the lust of eyes, it's worldly. And if it involves the pride of life, it's worldly. I, I need to break that down a little bit more, all right? So what do we mean when we talk about the lust of the flesh? The lust of the flesh, they are cravings for physical pleasure. The lust of the flesh is always about the gratification of the flesh. Nothing else matters except gratifying my flesh. We don't, they don't consider if it's right or wrong. If it gratifies my flesh, that is worldly. So what does it mean to have the lust of the eyes? The lust of the eyes is like you're, you're craving for everything you see. Uh, it, it's, the allure, it's the allurement of things of this world. And so every time you look at something, you're craving for this. You're cra In other words, you, you don't know how to be content. <laughs> you're craving for everything. The thing that you desire may not be wrong, but the fact that you're just craving for everything and you just can't be satisfied, that's the problem, the lust of the eyes. And then the pride of life. Uh, now, this is interesting. The pride of life involves pride in our achievements and our possessions. Here's what it literally means, obsession with status and importance. So the pride of life is all about you wanting to be important in the eyes of other people. The pride of life is you working real hard to be validated by others. You're working very hard uh, to achieve so that you can have the status of being important. And he says, these things are not of God. These things are of the world. Let me give you a simple illustration. You know, uh, some people say, now that I'm born again, you just ought to listen to church music. Sign me up. I don't want to hear that. <laughs> I don't want to hear that. Especially when it's your, your night with your husband or your wife, you don't want to put on sign me up. <laughs> you want to put on a little loo. <laughs> You'll never find. <laughs> sign me up. See, what you don't understand is that, I remember Tap and I came out, I forgot what conference we were, we were and we were, we, actually it was, it was a Christian song by Kurt Franklin, and we came out dancing with it. And some of the comments we got, that's just worldly. That's just not a good example. What? See, I don't want to hang around you because you don't understand how to have fun. You call everything worldly, and you're trying to invite me into the bondage of your sad life. But there are a lot of good songs that are not tagged as Christian songs that can be for your enjoyment, especially back in the day. I mean, there's just so, so many amazing songs. And we just, you know, I can't hear that because, no, please listen to me. God's number one objective is that you get to know him, that you learn how to enjoy life, and, you, and that you live it, enjoying life. Here's what I have to say. If you don't get anything else out of this sermon today, learn how to enjoy life. <laughs> learn how to enjoy life. Me and Taffy went hiking through canyons this past week. Well, I don't know you hike. I, I don't hike. It's just there wasn't no way through except walking. Learn how to enjoy your life. Quit being, quit being so stuck up in your holiness that you end up not being holy at all. <laughs> so the world, these set of people who have yet to accept Jesus, the world, these set of folks who are still not thinking in line with his God's Word. That's the world. See, you're, 
you're only one Jesus away from hell yourself. Do you understand that? You're, 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 you're not heaven bound because of your wonderful works. You're not heaven bound because of all your beautiful things you do. And while you do your wonderful works, you condemn other people for not doing what you do. The only, only reason you're getting in is because you accepted Jesus and what he has done. So now let's, let's look at these scriptures. Go back to where we started. Everybody cool with where we are now? So you know what the world is. Now, we live in the world, but we're not of the world. You understand that? We're here, but we're, we, don't, we don't believe like the world. We don't think like the world. We don't speak like the world. We don't panic like the world. We try to respond to the Word of God by faith instead of the way that the world responds. Now, that type of response is going to draw people to want to be like you. But you cannot continue to wear the T-shirt that says, I'm a Christian, while you demonstrate the character of the world. So what's the difference, you see? All right, now, let's go back to where we started from. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world. Another translation says to judge the world. Jesus didn't come to condemn everybody. Jesus didn't come to condemn you because you did that or you did that, or Jesus didn't come to condemn you because your behavior was bad. He didn't come to forgive you because you didn't speak the right words. He didn't come to condemn you because you missed a, a week of praying. He didn't come to condemn or judge you for that. I want you to get this. With all of the things that are in this world, with all of the things that are within in the lives of Christian people, Jesus didn't show up to, to, to condemn you and judge you with all the messy stuff that people have in their life. Jesus didn't come to condemn your mess. Amen. Think of that. He didn't come to, there's, Jesus didn't come like some church folks. Look at her. Mm, I ought to be ashamed of herself. Jesus didn't come to do that. So why are you doing it? Why are you... Why are church people constantly condemning other church people when you have enough stuff to deal with concerning your own self? You find the time to get in somebody else's business to judge and condemn them as if you have made it. Now, maybe you didn't break the, 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 the top ten, ten commandments. Maybe, maybe you didn't do this, maybe you didn't do that, but your attitude, there's no other way for me to say this, sucks. <laughs> Probably could have got a better word, but your attitude is bad. You, 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 every time you go somewhere to eat, you're, hard, you're real hard on the, on the servers that, that come and try to, waitresses and everything, you work out, I ain't leaving you no tip. And, you know, that's, how, that's they make their living that way. That is as much as sin as the guy committing adultery. All right, so now listen to this. But Jesus didn't come to condemn the world. See, the world's not even saved. And he didn't come to condemn all of Imagine this stuff. Oh, you ain't got to imagine it. You were, you were in the world at one time. You were of the world at one time. You already know. He didn't come to condemn or judge the world. And, and that's all we do. Look at them. Mm, mm, mm. Shy, Lord, have mercy. Help them, Jesus. Uh, uh, uh. Ought to be ashamed of themselves. And we shame people. I hear preachers, when they preach, they say people, they say to people, you, you ought to be ashamed. You get shame from the pulpit, and Jesus didn't come to condemn the world. Okay, so if he didn't come to condemn the world, wh why did he show up? So that that world, with all of that mess and all of that junk and all that bad behavior and all of that lust of the eyes and the, and, and the lust of the flesh and the pride of life, with all of the stuff that's going on, Jesus said, this is why I came. I came so that the world, through me, can be saved. I came to rescue a world that was swimming in mess.
And he said, they can't do it on their own. I came to get them out of it. I am their way out of their bad behavior. I am their way out of, of, the, of the stuff that came from abusive stuff in the past. I am their way out of, of being raped. I am their way out of hating and being hated. I am their way out of gossip. I am their way out of the secret closet sin. I am their way out. I came to be their way out. I didn't come to beat them up because of their sin. I came to be their way out. Jesus is our way out. He is our way out. Now, he came to be the way out for the world, but he's also the way out for those of you who are born again and still struggling in certain areas. Your answer is Jesus. So here's what we substituted for Jesus, for Christian people. I'm going to learn these seven ways of doing it, and with my own effort, I'm going to do these seven things, and I should be good. Now, here's the sad part about it, is you did those seven things, and they, they did pretty good for maybe a week or two, but you found yourself right back in it because you ignored the way out for your own self-preservation. You want to preserve yourself by yourself. You're trying to be like God without God. Somehow you think through your own self-effort that you can overcome your bad behavior. You can, come, you can overcome your, your idiosyncrasies. You can overcome all of that stuff without Jesus. I don't need a Jesus. I, I hear these intelligent folks who think they figured life out, and I'm sitting back here thinking, bless their heart. They're having a pretty successful season right now, but all hell's going to break loose again because they're trying to be like God without God. There's so many people who say, I don't I don't need God. I don't need the world. I don't need the church. I'm sorry that you had a bad experience at church, and, and, and you're right. You know, God tells us not to forsake ourselves, uh, forsake, uh, assembling ourselves together, but that doesn't mean come to church. It means get together as a community and keep building one another up so if one of them's tipping to the fall, you'll be there to kind of help them. So it's more than just coming to church, it's community. It, it don't forsake community. Stay around saved people. Stay around people who are strong in the Lord. So if you feel like you're about to give up, cave in, and quit, there's somebody that can be used by God that can, can speak a word into your life. That's what that means. We're not to change the Scripture and manipulate it to try to get you to come to church and then put fear on you and say, if you don't come to church, then you're you ain't no good. No, 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 no. I'm not going to condemn you and judge you. I'm saying you need Jesus because if you get Jesus, you're going to want to come to church. You're going to want to be around those people that are saved, but I don't want to be around somebody every time I show up, you condemning me, beating me up, and telling me I'm going to be in hell by noon. <laughs> and some people say, well, he's preaching that greasy grace. No, you don't understand. You don't understand. Until you believe and trust in Jesus, only then will you understand that he can do stuff on the inside of you that you've been trying to do all your life, and, and you'll, you'll change your behavior because you trust him. Well, you know, this group said there ain't no Jesus, or that group say, you know, don't believe in Jesus because he was white, or that group said, you know, don't believe in Jesus because, you know, la, 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 la. There's all kinds of people Jesus already prophesied that was going to come in the last days, antichrist spirits that are going to try to get you away from the Lord Jesus Christ. All right, now, let's look at the same Scripture. I am on one Scripture. Wow. Let's look at the TPT version of the same Scripture. Jesus didn't come to condemn. Look at this in TPT. God did not send his Son into the world to judge and condemn the world, but to be its Savior and rescue it. Jesus wants to rescue you from your bad behavior. Jesus wants to rescue you from your bad attitude. Jesus wants to res rescue you from your secret sins. Jesus wants to rescue you from your condemnation, because all that stuff brings about condemnation. He wants to rescue you from your shame, because all that stuff brings about shame. He wants to rescue you from your guilt, because all of that stuff brings guilt. And when you're operating in condemnation, shame, and guilt, it'll stop you from going forward because every time you go forward, the condemnation pulls you back. Every time you go forward, the shame pulls you back. Every time you go forward, the guilt pulls you back. And you're stuck in shame and guilt. And Jesus says, I've come to rescue you from the shame and the guilt. You know what he said about shame? He said, he that believeth in Jesus shall not be put to shame. 
You know what he said about condemnation? There is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. In both cases, Christ Jesus is your way out of condemnation, guilt, and shame. Amen? All right, look at 1 John chapter 2, verse 2 in the King James. 1 John 2 and 2. Well, Pastor, you know, you need to tell these people about their sin. Let me tell you something. Let me, let me tell you something I've learned about people. People are going to do what they want to do. People, some people say, I need my sin. Somebody says, well, how, what? How would you say that? They say, the only way I have relief from all of this that's happened to me in my life this, is, this makes me feel good. This sin makes me feel good. I need my sin. And they go into self-gratification, and they trust their, their self to deal with their issues rather than, than trusting Jesus. And, and, and people are going to do what they want to do. And you know what? You're a free moral agent. You get to do whatever you want to do. But there are consequences for your choices. Choose life or death. Choose a blessing or a curse. You choose. You have to make that choice. And that's what, I mean, I would love for when I preach the gospel, everybody respond, but it's just not like that. I hear what you're saying, Reverend, but, you know, uh, I, I, you know I, I, I'm, I'm shacking up, and, 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 I, and, 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 and now I, I got, I got uh, two more folks in here. <laughs> you know, I'm a man, and now I got two women. And, and we're having this poly thing going on, and, 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 and ain't nothing wrong with it. Well, it, 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 actually, it actually is because there's an inequality in this one man having multiple women. Uh, what you're doing is you're robbing those women of the opportunity for them to mature greatly in who they are and mature greatly in, in, in the security of what they have, and you're robbing them for that because it's just you and three of them, and, and you have to come and choose, which, you know, brings about rejection and all kinds of stuff. There's a lot of damaging things, but if you're just getting with uh, somebody in multiple marriage uh, just so y'all can have some money, they ain't going to be enough after a while because, you know, he choosing her every night and, and, and choosing you maybe once a year. And, and, and that's, that's, that's rejection. Uh, that's a lot of emotional stuff that's coming in and damaging you, and you're never being able to grow in the fullness of who God wants you to do because you're in a perverted situation and, and thinking that it's okay. Now, you can make a decision to do that, and Jesus is not going to condemn you from doing that. But there are consequences for making those bad decisions. But he says, I can save you from that. Can rescue you from that. Now, I'm speaking these things, and some of you think, really, people do that? God, you ain't heard the half, or the half ain't been told. <laughs> There's some stuff going on, I don't even know what to call it. I don't even know how to talk about it. <laughs> I'm talking about that old stuff 30 years ago. There's a lot of new stuff going on now. Because the norms and the values of the world has reached their ultimate place. Whatever makes you feel good, do it. Jesus says, I want to rescue you from that. And he's the only way out. And you may enjoy it for a moment or years, but you'll end up one day in such regret, and Jesus will still be there to rescue you from that. He's never going to quit on you. He's never going to quit on you. Maybe you lost a lot of years of your life, and maybe you, 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 you have a lot of regret, regret, a lot of pain, and maybe, we, maybe I can go back in the past and find out what happened to cause you to be like that. But at the end of the day, Jesus is still standing there with his hands wide open, his arms open, saying, I'm still here. All of the junk you just went through is still not enough to drive me away. I've been waiting on you, son. I've been waiting on you, daughter. Come on. I want to rescue you from that. Are you doing things to try to feel God's love? In his series, How to Experience the Love of God, Creflo Dollar reveals that we don't have to jump through hoops to feel God's love, only believe. You got to believe God loves you when it doesn't look good. When you believe the love of God, you say, I believe God's love for me. That's why I know I'm going to be healed. I'm going to be delivered. This is going to be fine. This is going to work out. And God wants to hear that rehearsed and coming out of our mouth. I believe that God loves me. Quit believing.
believing God for little. God is a big God, and he's ready to do some big, extraordinary things in your life, but he's waiting for you to believe. That's how big his love is. Go to creflodollarministries.org and click eStore, or call the number on your screen to claim your copy of all three of these life-changing messages for a love gift of only 20 U.S. dollars or more, plus shipping and handling. Walk in God's love today. Get ready for change. The message of grace is coming to a city near you. Join Creflo Dollar in Los Angeles, California on January 27th and Houston, Texas on February 23rd and 24th. Grace has provided and supplied for us the power to change. Come out for live morning confessions in person with Creflo Dollar. You don't want to miss these soul-stirring sessions to help you implement meaningful change in every area of your life. This juxtaposition between grace and faith and works, just put it into perfect perspective. Just the crowd, the expectation, the word going forth is so supernaturally wonderful. Seating is limited, so register now. Log on to www.creflodollarministries.org to check out the full 2023 Change Experience Tour schedule. Pick up your phone, call the number on your screen or scan the QR code right now to register. See you in your city. I think you would be amazed at what Creflo Dollar Ministry does every day around the world. Testimonies come in from all over about the impact we have. And I wish you could see the kids we feed. Their lives are changed and impacted for the better because of you, our givers. The seeds you sow into this ministry make a mark that uh, that can never be erased. And I want to thank you so much for your financial contributions into the kingdom of God and into this ministry. If God has placed it on your heart to support the vision of this ministry to reach the world with the gospel of grace, you may call in to make your financial donations or log on to creflodollarministries.org. God bless you. Download and stay connected with the Changing Your World podcast with Creflo Dollar. Keep the Word of God at the forefront of your mind with these powerful and uplifting messages. You've got to figure out a way to maintain your meditation on Him. you got to think on Him. I want my thinking to be on God. I want my thinking to be on His Word. I want my thinking to be on life. I want my thinking to be on His promises. Keep your mind stayed upon Him and walk in His presence. With each message that you download and stream, you gain revelation of the fullness of God's grace. And how many of you know we've got to shine the light out so that we can see God and we can experience His plan for our life and we can see what He wants to do and turn situations around. The Changing Your World podcast brings you life-changing wisdom right at your fingertips, no matter where you are. Subscribe today on Apple Podcast, Spotify, or your preferred podcast platform. Because of you, Preplo Dollar Ministries is providing a new understanding of grace and empowering change in the lives of millions of people every day. Thank you, partners and friends. Your love and financial support makes it possible to bring this message into millions of homes all across the globe. The preceding program was brought to you by the partners and friends of Creflo Dollar Ministries.